In the wake of Roe being reversed, the pro-life generation is more unstoppable than ever. So it makes sense that we're, what we're seeing from pro-abortion pop culture is overcompensating by going a little insane these days. Hey, Pro-Life Jen, this is Kristen Hawkins. Welcome to this new episode of the Explicitly Pro-Life Podcast. Abortions may be regulated, but not prohibited by state law. There is no constitutional right to an abortion in this country anymore as of today. culture even a little bit, and for me it is a little bit, you know that pro-abortion messages are a huge topic on television, in the music industry, among social media influencers right now, it's all over. And it makes sense because the abortion industry's target age group is young people and their goal is to sell them abortions. And they are the most pop culture savvy demographic, way more pop culture savvy than my mom, trust me. Uh, and if they don't convince young women that abortion is great, they lose business. But you may not be aware of just how brazen the abortion narrative has gotten in pop culture since Roe's reversal in June. So I've done you a solid today and brought on the woman who knows more about pop culture than anyone else I've ever met, and that is Alex Clark. Alex is the host of Poplitics and The Spillover, as well as a Turning Point USA contributor. Poplitics is, get this, the first ever conservative pop culture daily show covering entertainment news, pop culture with the propaganda. Alex's impact on young conservative women throughout politics led her to create the cute conservative movement. Her unapologetic approach to culture is defined daily by her wit, her right of center lens, and a little dose of what she calls sim and roll culture. You gotta watch the show on Instagram, get it? I have watched the show, it's fantastic. Then she has The Spillover, the big sister of the politics. The Spillover is a deep dive into stories that Alex, Alex is compelled by beyond this, the Hollywood news cycle. Every week she leaves her audience on the edge of its seat with stories that haunt, challenge, humor and captivate with over 1 million downloads to date the spillover continues to reach audience way beyond just the normal what you would think is a conservative movement whether she's giving her take on politics or the spillover or fox news or fox business or even her personal instagram page alex's unique approach to conservative ideas are challenging the status quo politics and pop culture alex thanks so much for being on again Kristen, you have my favorite freaking podcast in the pro-life movement. Obviously, I'm going to come on as many a times as you have me. <laughs> I love having you on because you make me feel like so with it. Like after I watch one of your episodes, I'm like, okay, I get it. I didn't have to watch TV all day to understand what's going on. Alex just gave it to me straight. What's going on? I love it. You make me feel so cool. So thank you for coming on. <laughs> That's that's what I aim to do. And I, I love that your your podcast is called Explicitly Pro-Life because some of the stories that we're talking about today are, are pretty explicit. Yeah, yeah. I think there's probably gonna be an outtakes edition where I just read all, I might read some of the scripts, but wow, they are very explicit. So just warning to all of you, there is a reason we call this Explicitly Pro-Life and it is coming soon. There, this is a really, for me, a timely issue because we saw immediately after Roe's reversal, just like social media going crazy, all of these like fear mongering myths going out there, you know, definitions were being changed, Planned Parenthood's changing its website left and right. Um, you know, you have Teen Vogue, which is like doing the schlepping of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood must be funding Teen Vogue at this point. You have the music industry. It's crazy. So I needed to get your take on some of the current things that I might even miss. Sometimes I see things and I'm like, 
What I okay, let me just give you perspective of this first person I want to talk about. I was at this like really nice hotel at this conservative movement leader thing. I get a text from our staffers is like, you have to watch this video. I think my phone is on mute and it is not on mute. And this crazy video of a female rapper who I don't even know how, how, what her name is because it's like an acronym. So you're gonna have to tell me what it is. She created this music video of twerking outside of a Planned Parenthood singing about how she has murder in her mind. Can you tell us what's going on? on here okay so first of all that is hilarious to me that of course Kristen was just like sitting with like all the who's who in the conservative movement this pro-life event then she and then you push play on this video because it is so raunchy bad and there's like women Mm -hmm. half naked twerking in front of Planned Parenthood but yeah it's um it's a remix and the what the girl the rapper's name is it is an acronym. It's like a bunch of letters. And so yeah. I don't even know what it is. I, I made a joke. And T-N-F-W. Meek, Meek, right? Yeah. But I don't yeah, know how you so, pronounce T-N-F-W. So we'll see. I have that. no idea. I'm sure okay. it's something bad. But like, okay. so this chick is a nobody, which is great. She's a nobody. The The video went viral because of how crazy it is. But she herself is uh, a nobody. And she was remixing a real song from real artists, a popular song right now in hip hop. Oh. So the beat okay. and the lyrics and stuff, um, she just changed the lyrics, but the beat is the same as another song that's super popular. So I think that's Ooh. why this was so shocking to people and it caught on because they're like familiar with the song and all of a sudden it's talking about, I got murder on my mind and she's twerking in front of a Planned Parenthood and how she's so excited to basically get rid of a deadbeat guy that got her pregnant and killed a baby and now she and she's cool. She can just keep living her life and do what she wants. That's what's the, the the remix is about i actually like endured the suffering and watched the entire video and i kind of was wondering like is she secretly pro-life because this video is so horrific i mean the you know i mean the, the lyrics are that means i ain't got a n-word baby coming out of me so i'm a b o r t i n g on the way to clinic i forgot plan b let's go bitch i got murder on my mind i'm b d f baby daddy free i mean like and then she's twerking and there's planned parenthood and there's like money and like there's all this stuff going on i'm like is she secretly like trolling us and is really pro-life because yeah that's what killing babies is that's what abortion is it's it's murder thank you for admitting that Well, I was really curious about how the pro-abortion side felt about this video. And Kristen, this is so crazy. So they said that this video is empowering and it's the exact type of eye-catching, vulgar stunt they need in the aftermath of overturning Roe. So they acknowledge that it's super barbaric, but they say that that helps with their cause because in their mind, that's going to draw attention to the dire circumstances that they feel like women are in. And they said, especially black women. Wow. I actually think I would donate to get that, this terrible commercial on TV because she's literally admitting murder. Like she says, Mur- I got murder on my mind. Like we just need to, you know, a lot of us in the polite movement have had discussions of the years of why are we calling abortion? We should call it murder or legalized killing or something like, you know, abortion is kind of sanitizing what happens inside Planned Parenthood. But it is, uh, it's an interesting video ad. And I, I, I think it's interesting that you, you said that they are actually, I, I was reading this article of like, all of these like rappers sharing sharing the video and like saying that she should get an award for doing this. But Kristen, here's what's interesting. This is a viral video. Just like you said, all these rappers sharing it. It's promoting abortion. It's remixed. uh, It's remixing a hit song. It's outside of a Planned Parenthood. So why hasn't Planned Parenthood shared it and been promoting it? To my knowledge, they haven't. So the question is why? Because this girl is literally saying she's got murder on her mind. They know it's too brutal for the public, especially people who are in the mushy middle, like you and I talk about when it comes to abortion. Mm -hmm. Uh, Uh, Planned Parenthood, this is what I think, they don't want people to correlate abortion with the word murder because if you do that, you're then forced to reconcile with the fact that the woman is carrying a human being. You don't murder a clump of cells. It is a baby. And ultimately, a music video like this is probably like what you're saying, going to push more women to the pro-life side than pro-choice. 
I'm actually thinking as you're talking, like, I wonder if we could do a mashup campaign ad of like Joe Biden and then this woman twerking in front of Planned Parenthood who got murder on the mind, then Nancy Pelosi, I got murder on the mind, and whatever, you know, terrible US Democrat Senate candidates out there. Because sounds good to me. Oh, gosh. I mean, the woman who believes that uh, the heartbeat is just a manufactured sound propagated by the patriarchy to keep women enslaved. It's, you know, science denier, full on. Uh, un unbelievable. That without the words that come out of that woman's mouth just continue to astound me. All right, next pop culture thing that I saw. Now I did see this. Teen Vogue had an article, five schools and states where abortion is banned say that they may cover the travel for in, the cost for interstate travel. And this was interesting. This was a girl who I don't know if she was paid or not, but she said she was a pro-abortion high school girl. She contacted 61 colleges in pro-life states and asked them if she got pregnant at their college, would they pay for her to go have an abortion in a you know slave state, a killing state? Um, the bad news is that any school would do it, but the slightly good news is only five of the schools uh, said yes. Um, call me old fashioned, but I'm kind of one of those like feminists who thinks it's very misogynistic to tell a woman she can't achieve her education without killing your children. What are your thoughts on this story? Well, here's the unapologetic truth, okay? High school and college age girls get super fired up. They're very passionate about mm -hmm. equality for women because they're brainwashed into thinking that, you know, as women, we're not paid equally. We're victims of toxic masculinity, the patriarchy. Typically, these people end up voting more liberal because of these reasons. You know, mm -hmm. we're raising women in this era of pop culture. Um, it, it, under this assumption that we're all victim. And so we kind of vote blue by default because of that. And so when women do that, when they're voting blue and they're doing all these different things, they, they think that they're really giving the middle finger to the man, literally and figuratively. But what's very ironic about workplaces and schools telling women, oh, we'll pay for you to travel to another state to have an abortion is that they don't offer that same amount of money to women who choose to keep their baby. Now, why is that? Why don't those schools or companies mm -hmm. offer things like provide a daycare or paid maternity leave all the time? Sometimes they don't because they don't actually value you as a woman. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to have something else in your life that will, will require them to spend more money on healthcare benefits, time off for you, days for you. You are, the irony is you are part of the machine, the very machine that you've been telling yourself you've been fighting. That's what is anti-woman. And when mm -hmm. you support these schools or these companies saying, we're going to pay for women to go get an abortion in another state so they can keep on working for us and doing what we want them to do. That's what you're supporting. That's right. Preach it, sister. I mean, that makes that made me so mad. There was that um, all these like big Fortune 500 CEOs that signed this open letter. You know, don't worry, women of the workforce, if you get pregnant, even if we're in Georgia or, or Texas, we'll pay for you to kill your children. Oh, thank you, woke CEOs. That's literally in their bottom line, right? That is their bottom line is they want to keep her at work. And so to keep her at work, of course, go have an abortion because you won't need to take time off to, for the birth of your child or take your kid to daycare or have to deal with sick days for your children. It's in their corporate bottom line to encourage her to have an abortion. It's like literally the opposite of everything that the feminist movement, you know, that the first wave and the second wave of the feminist movement originally fought for, which is that women can, I don't know, call me crazy, be wives and mothers and also have a career. Right. And I, and I do think, you know, for me, I think the pro-life movement could do better about being honest of, okay, can a woman have a career and a family too? Mm -hmm. Yes. However, it just may need to happen at different times in your life. If, right. if, you know, during your twenties or your thirties, you really, really are career focused and you want to put your career first, then there is always a cost to that. There's always going to be a cost to different decisions you make. So that That's means right. may, you may have to wait to have a family till later. And then if you wait till, too long, you may not be able to get pregnant or there might be, you know, more dangers mm -hmm. associated with getting pregnant later in the life. On the flip side of that, if you want to put a family first and get married young and have babies young and all that stuff, you probably can't be, you know, a CEO of one of those fortune 500 companies, or, you know, it's going to have to be later when your kids are in school mm -hmm. or move out of the house and different things like that. I just heard a friend told me the other day that um 
uh, uh, someone she knows, someone's mother, you know, all her kids now are out of college. They're all having their own families. And so now she just has started her career as a flight attendant and she's always her whole life wanted to be a flight attendant. And so now she just became one as she's, uh, you know, not a grandmother yet, but all her kids are probably going to start having kids soon and all this. And so she's doing that later in life, but she got to do it. She got to have it all. Mm -hmm. It just was on a little bit different of a timeline. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. There's, you know, there are decisions you have to make. And I think we have to be real about the, the decisions that women make, understanding, going with your eyes wide open, what you're choosing. And, you know, as someone who got married at 20, yes, I got married at 20, scandal, I know, uh, and who was pregnant and gave birth at 23, uh, while, you know, starting Students for Life at 21, I very much, you know, had to, you know, create our organization, build our organization around building my family. And trust me, there were trade-offs. There were opportunities I couldn't take because I was at home dealing with my son who had been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. And so I had to slow down some opportunities at Students for Life. There are years that I have lost memory-wise with my first, my first and second sons because of, you know, me getting four hours of sleep every night, commuting an hour and a half each way into DC to our office. Office of, of memories that my husband will bring up of like, oh, do you remember when Gunnar and Bear did this? And I'll say, no, I don't. Um, where I where I remember them much more clearly with my two younger children. Um, and those are trade-offs that I've had to make. And some, you know, I can't take those back. And I think we have to be very clear when we're having those discussions and talking with young women who are trying to grapple with how do I have it both? Because I think this feminist culture has been like, I am woman, hear me where I can do everything except, you know, get pregnant. I can't do that. Planned parent tells me I'm not capable of doing that. We on the other side, and the flip side of the problem would say, yes, you can do both, but you're absolutely right. We have to do a better job of saying, yes, you can do both, but it's going to be hard. It's going to require, um, it's going to require a compromise. And there may be times where you're full speed ahead with one while the other is, is, is slower and vice versa. Yeah. And I think also just talking about, hey, if you don't want to make a trade-off, you don't want to do any compromises, you want to pick one or the other, knowing that, okay, if you are choosing career or family, I always tell women when they're like, well, I don't know what to do, like college age women, Mm -hmm. um, you know, should I focus on having a family or should I go the career route? And I'm like, look, this is a very unpopular opinion in culture today, but when you are on your deathbed, none of your coworkers are going to be there with you a family Mm -hmm. would be who would be there with you ideally. Right. And so Mm -hmm. for me, I always think about that. And, you know, then people are like, well, you're, you know, I'm 29 and I have had a career since I was 18. And I, you know, I have two shows Mm -hmm. of Turning Point USA and all this, and I don't have a family, but I always also tell people just being completely transparent. It isn't that I necessarily chose that on purpose. I've wanted to get married since I was 18. That has always been at the forefront. It just hasn't happened yet. That hasn't been God's timing yet. But you know, when it does, if I'm forced to choose, okay, Am I going to be a mom or have a career? I would choose being a mother every single time. No hesitation. So yeah, I, I, it's a very interesting conversation. And I like that mm-hmm. more and more in the pro-life movement, we're starting to kind of explain that. Because I think for too long, we were just like, you can have it all. That's it. Um, and you you can have it all, different timing. And you never have to abort your child to yeah. be able to pursue one or either or both of those. No one should have to die in order for you to live your life, right? And um, for you to have a successful life. I guess getting back to this Teen Vogue college expose that they did. One of the questions I have is what the hell is wrong with Teen Vogue? I mean, I remember when I was growing up, like Teen Vogue, like there were like dating tips, style tips, you know, how to change your look with a different lipstick color. And like now, you know, they do articles about what to get your friend after she's had an abortion, how to stand up. I mean, I I have a feeling they're probably not even saying woman when they talk about a pregnant person anymore. What's happening there? You know, what's interesting is um, I I believe the last physical print issue Teen Vogue had was Hillary Clinton in 2016, right before the election. And then it flopped so bad and it caused such an uproar that all of a sudden they were like, oh, we're done. We're not going to be printing the magazine anymore. We're fully online. And it was from then on that it seemed like there was a massive transition into celebrating socialism, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. anal sex for teenagers, the abortion stuff. And, you know, they have articles celebrating Antifa saying we need to be more, you know, sympathetic to Antifa and their, and their, uh, I don't know, 
clans. So yeah, very, very weird. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they have some interesting funding from multiple different uh, yeah. areas there, but it's, it's absolutely a leftist rag shilling for leftist politicians, leftist ideas. But the good news is, is, I mean, I don't know any teenagers that are looking up magazines to read their articles anymore. It's just not a thing. You know what I'm saying? And they do not have a big presence on any social media sites. So hopefully it's just going to kind of disappear sooner rather than die later. like Roe versus Wade died, I guess is the goal. Uh, I mean, it's um, it, it, that makes sense because, you know, you find these like I, for example, after Roe was reversed, we were all in the, these headlines in the New York Times and I went around town and I had we had 200 students in D.C. And I was like, get every copy you can, the New York Times or the, you know, all these newspapers because I wanted to send them out to supporters, to student leaders across the country. We couldn't find them, Alex. Like you can't even buy New York Times in whole parts of the country. I had staff all over the country. I was like, go out and buy the New York Times. We're gonna, you know, we'll print them. We're gonna put them in, um, uh, you know, frame, sell. You know, I love it when you know front page of the New York Times is the pro life generation. You can't buy this crap. I mean, literally, like it's all online now. I think about it and I was in New York City in February was the last time I was there. And yeah, there were no magazine newspaper stands like how no. they usually have those where you go up and you buy one. I haven't seen any. So you're right. Maybe just physical print newspapers, yeah. magazines are just completely done unless you're in a grocery store, I suppose. I guess. I don't know. I mean, there's always Woman's World Daily or whatever that I see in the grocery store. With the, you can always read the stuff in your dentist office. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, this kind of makes sense. All right. Uh, other pop culture thing that I saw. There was a rapper uh, named Lotto. Is that how you pronounce her name? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. She has officially like teamed up with Planned Parenthood. She was at the VMAs. That's MTV's Video Music Awards bragging about how she was like Planned Parenthood spokesperson, talking to people about going to their bands off our bodies page, uh, their website, which is, you know, the acronym is boobs, which I think is hilarious. She made a very intelligent statement um, to the billboard reporter there at the red carpet when they asked her about her support for abortion, this new music video that she has. Uh, this was her quote, male, female, whatever you is, Baby they, Planned Parenthood, will help you out, learn you, help you learn you know more information, why this is important, et cetera, et cetera. It was, um, yeah. And the lyrics to her like new song Pussy, uh, which got the BET Hip Hop Award for best impact track or something like that. I mean, the lyrics, I mean, it is, wow scandalous lyrics uh the the main chorus line if you can have a chorus line rap song is girls you can do what guys do and still be a lady but then the rest of it's just all about misogynistic men and telling her what to do with her body and it's her you know part and she can do whatever she wants uh what is going on what am i supposed to make of planned parenthood partnering with with this woman I mean, Planned Parenthood, you and I know, counts on women being ignorant and gullible. Yeah. And that's why they need someone who can't form a proper sentence and is clearly illiterate, like Lotto saying that, you know, a man or whatever you is can get help at Planned Parenthood. Like, how does Planned Parenthood help <laughs> women by not telling the truth? Here's here's yep. an honest question. How do they how do they help women by not telling them the truth and giving them um spliced and diced information about abortion procedures and fetal development? For example, like we talked about earlier. Earlier. Stacey Abrams saying that a fetal heartbeat at six weeks was an optical illusion from doctors. And then right after that, uh, what did we see? Planned Parenthood erases from their website that you hear a heartbeat at six weeks along. We also know that Planned Parenthood will use verbiage like gray matter instead of the word brains when they're talking about sucking them out of a baby's skull. They do this because if every woman knew what truly happens during an abortion. And if they had undeniable facts that prove it is a living, breathing human being in the womb, they wouldn't support abortion. That's right. Absolutely right. That's absolutely right. And it's unbelievable that Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion vendor, the largest promoter of abortion in our world today, gets 600 million of our taxpayer dollars every year. They only increase every year. 
for the past 20 years, they just continue to increase their share of the abortion industry. So they commit over 40% of all abortions in America today. Their quote unquote good services for the past 20 years continue to decline. And yet they, you know, form these, these partnerships with rappers like Lotto to get young people into their doors. But also um, Lotto doesn't say in that quote that you read, she doesn't say Planned Parenthood, you know, whatever you is, if you need help, Planned Parenthood will help you. Well, help you with what? She doesn't use <laughs> yeah. the word abortion. And after Roe uh, Ro was overturned, what did we see? Planned Parenthood clinics across the country shutting okay. down. If they're helping women and doing all of these different services and all these different things besides abortion that women need, why are they shutting down just because Roe was overturned? It's because mm-hmm. their main thing is abortion and some states they can't offer that. Like, no, Nobody is being intellectually honest in this conversation. And that is what is so frustrating. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. So those are the only three pop culture references that I could think of. What have I missed that our viewers, uh, folks that are listening into this podcast need to know is out there that I don't even know about. Well, I'm sure you, I'm sure you saw this. You just probably, it slipped your mind, but Chrissy Teigen saying, oh, Oh. you know what? LOL, just kidding. In 2020, my miscarriage that I had was actually an abortion. It was, you know, and so in the age of roving overturned, if I would have had that miscarriage now, then I wouldn't have gotten the life-saving care that I needed, um, which is such a dangerous lie. And that is- What a media- I mean, what a ter- I mean, that's all that was for. That was a publicity statement. That That's what it was. Because for the pro aborts, they want you to think that if you have a miscarriage, because the medical term is spontaneous abortion, right? So like for a miscarriage. So they want all these people saying, oh, well, that's technically an abortion. So because of Roe being overturned, look, I would have died on the table. Nobody would have been able to save me. That is such bullshit. Sorry, but it it's just not true. And it's sure. those types of lies that are, that is what's putting women in danger because that's why you have nurses and doctors saying, oh no, this woman is having a miscarriage. I guess I can't do anything to help her because isn't this illegal? But none of it is. It, it's nope. just, that is what is dangerous. It's not Roe being overturned. Now women won't get health care. No, 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 no. That's not what's happening when a woman has a miscarriage, which M- Chrissy Teigen had a miscarriage. She that's was right, holding yeah. Her, her dead baby when she miscarried. So it wasn't an abortion. That wasn't an intentional killing of a human being. That's right. And I think that that's why we've seen some pro-life uh, physicians even saying now, like when we're talking about this, we need to say elective abortion because they're trying to confuse the terms. I mean, I, why should we be surprised people who don't even want to say that women are the ones who can get pregnant and give birth anymore want to confuse the term abortion because they want to normalize abortion. So if they can convince all the millions of women who've gone through tragic, painful, hurtful miscarriages, i.e. spontaneous abortions defined by the dictionary, that they actually are, you know, pro- post-abortive and they're part of this movement that they can convince all these millions of Americans to support their radical agenda, which is elective abortion in all nine months of pregnancy for whatever reason, taxpayer funded. Yeah. And this is, again, this is manipulating definitions to That's make right. things sound so much sweeter and so much right. better than they are. Who can argue with, uh, um, you know, life-saving care? If you have a miscarriage, mm-hmm. you can argue with that. So they call it an abortion. Who Who's going to question anything called gray matter? You know, that doesn't sound scary. Nope. Brains sound scary. Who's going to, you know, you're not putting that uh, a six-week-old fetus has a heartbeat. Why? What are they hiding? Why do they need to change all these definitions if abortion itself is this very nice pleasant easy thing why do they always have to do all these very manipulative tactics to promote it yeah you're absolutely right again of course Thank you so much, Alex, for coming on. It's so refreshing to talk to you. I know you always have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. I would encourage folks, they've got to follow the Spillover podcast. They got to follow Poplitics on uh, Instagram. Where else can folks find you? That's, I mean, that's pretty much it. Search for The Spillover Perfect. anywhere you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, and Poplitics on Instagram. That's where we post my pop culture show. And I'm real Alex Clark on Instagram if you want to follow she's me. She's the real Alex Clark, not the fake Alex Clark, the real Alex Clark. Clark. Not Thank those you. imposters. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. It was so fun to talk to you again, my friend. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you share this episode explicitly pro-life so you can be up to date with what's going on in pop culture and know how we should be discussing and talking about these outrageous things uh, that the abortion and their the abortion culture and the uh, their friends in Hollywood and the mainstream media are trying to propagate right now. Bye, guys.